I think they have HDMI cables here. So it's a French company originally, it's still a French company, most of the people in the company are French. I'm actually from Germany, but I also speak French. And uh, my boss is in San Francisco, so it's a quite international company, and normally French technology companies, they're not so good in internationalizing themselves. And so last year, when I, when I met my cool boss, uh, we had lunch together, and we just decided that we make Gandhi in Asia as well. So uh, what we did is, uh, see, um, Okay. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I start with this one. Okay. So about Gandhi, we have, uh, we have a trademark, which is no bullshit. It's, uh, it's basically our company philosophy as well. We don't try to be like GoDaddy. If you buy a domain, it doesn't mean you have to buy hosting. If you buy a hosting, it doesn't mean you have to buy SSL. It doesn't mean you need to buy another domain name. It doesn't mean um, in two years you will have to pay double and maybe for another domain you get half the price. So we're not that kind of company. Uh, we don't advertise. It means we make no advertisement. We basically support organizations. We sponsor events, uh, and so we are doing that kind of thing in Asia now as well. And uh, yeah, so our, our customer service is very highly rated in Frogs, which is still our main customer base. And uh, so one, some of the organizations we support is uh, DLC. They have an office in our office in Paris. So it's Video Lab Client is, uh, is a video software. Video viewer software, uh, we support uh, Debian and Ubuntu. They get discounted rates on our domain name as well. 
Uh, we support the Taipei hackerspace in Taipei. I don't know if anyone of you knows it. It's a, it's a very small hack space where people just basically uh, hack some hardware and play a little bit around with their projects. And uh, yeah, and, and some other organizations. So for example, Spam House is an organization which fights spam groups with, with using the police and Interpol and that kind of stuff. So pretty serious things. Uh, yeah, so we are in Taiwan. The, the name is uh, Guandi, <laughs> which my, my wife chose, and everybody says it's a very nice name. And um, yeah, so we have a, we are at Renai, at the Renai Circle, just over there somewhere. And um, currently we are nine people. So in, we st I started in July last year, and we, I hire like one person every month, I think. And the main thing we did is we had uh, we launched a customer support in French from this time zone. Because the thing we need to have is to have a 24 hour support for our customers. So, San Francisco is minus 8 hours and Paris is like the other direction, 6 7 hours. So, that's why we can have 24 hour support for our customer. And so, 80% of all the people in our office they actually speak French. And for some reason, I find many Taiwanese people who can speak very good French, even better than me. <laughs> and uh, so, that's, that, that was a very good thing. Because I mean, I could have also set the company up in Hong Kong or, or North Korea or Japan, which is, makes much more sense because they're industrial countries. But uh, I was thinking like, okay, uh, I don't, I don't like those countries because the working there is very tiresome, and Taiwan is much more complicated. So my boss was okay, luckily, and uh, it's really. Uh, so our history as a domain name registrar is that we we started 15 years ago, as I mentioned. And what happens recently with the domain name is that there are many uh, new extensions. We already support most of the country extensions like .tw, .cn, .jp. And since about two years, there's new extensions like. Uh, Dot club, dot systems, dot ninja, dot engineering, and also in March there is uh, a new domain name uh, going live. It's called dot Taipei. Maybe you saw some advertising for that. I don't know. So the the idea is that the people they want to strip the the, the ICANN, which is the Internet Authority, they want to give the people more room to develop their brands or whatever. So that, that's why they're making new TNEs. It's a little bit tiresome as well for us because we need to have more contracts with more countries with more different registries. So it's it's, it's quite complex and a mess. But uh, yeah, but we do we do quite well. So we manage 1.6 million domains, and I think that in in the worldwide we are, we are number 15. So we are number six in Europe, number one in France, and we are number 15 worldwide. Uh, yeah. So this is about dot uh, Taipei. You see, there's a different launch space for a new top level domain. So first you have like the Sunrise space, the re 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 something space. Uh, then you have like Landrush, and where companies can register. And at the end of uh, of March, there will be the Go Live phase, which means it's a general availability phase, so everybody can have more dot I think they still block some names, like you cannot have KMT or Taipei or something like that. So they, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we are we are also a hosting company. The, hist the history of our hosting is we started that in 2008, and we basically just did it for fun. But it became serious after one year because many of our customers they also needed hosting with their services. So we call this uh, infrastructure as a service. And it's, we are quite different from Amazon or Linode or DigitalOcean. I mean, DigitalOcean, they will just tell you in comparison, you have some fixed amount you can have and you have to use this. And if you want to buy one gigabyte more, you need to pay uh, um, a little bit much more than you want to. But uh, yeah, so that we, are, we, are, we basically say, okay, we have a very dynamic system uh, based on credits. So you buy credits first with a, with a prepaid account. And then you can you can use those credits and uh, have a variable resource which you want to use on, on your on your hosting. And the data centers we have right now in Paris, Luxembourg. Luxembourg is a very strategic location for data centers in Europe. They have the highest amount of data centers in the world for a country. And uh, because it's just the center of Europe, and we are also in the US and soon in Tokyo. So Tokyo is the Equinix TY3, which is a very professional data center. And. Uh, yeah, so you can between those VMs. I don't know if anyone is very familiar with this hosting, but uh, because there are many iOS developers, right? So you, you can launch different VMs or virtual machines, and uh, then you can have up to 24 gigabyte of RAM and for 60 terabyte of uh, SaaS storage. The thing is, that the the RAM allocation, for example, is dynamic. We have an API which is free to use, and you can basically say, okay, now I want to use 512, and maybe now I have like Piccolo says, okay, we have 1,000 customers who want to use. Uh, who convert the images or resize them so you could just uh, push up the RAM and then dynamically go up and down with this. And your your consumption and the money you have to pay to us would be would be lower because of that time. Uh, yeah. So we also have a 
platform as a service, simple hosting, um, with four different programming language. Which, which one of you is using PHP for the web service? <laughs> Nobody? Who's using Python? Anybody's using Python? I do Python. Python, okay, yes. Python is good. Node.js, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> and Ruby, Ruby is quite new, I don't know. Well, maybe, okay, yeah. So Ruby is more popular with RSP, well. it's the most popular, I think. Yeah. And uh, for, the, for the databases which you can connect to those, you can choose between uh, between MySQL, Postgres, and MongoDB. I think MongoDB is getting much more popular recently because people are so tired of MySQL. And uh, yeah. so for this for this kind of hosting, we have we make fixed sizes and we say like, okay, this is we have included uh, a certain amount of traffic, but this basically means this is the kind of VM which is behind the simple hosting which we give you. The thing is, we built this system on top of our existing hosting service. But it's not like a shared hosting because you will really have a virtual machine. So you can connect to it with a console, but it's not like it's like a serial console, it's not like a real shell. And you can type comments, you can move directories, and uh, you can also uh, push your code with Git. So every v, every v host is like a container, and you can you can actually manage manage your code like your code like Heroku. But I think I'm always told it's a bit better than Heroku because you can you can do more things. Uh, so a little bit more on our API. Um, we have a domain API, a contact API. So these two APIs, they're basically for registering domain names. And as, as I mentioned, there's no, as I mentioned, there's no, uh, not any kind of monthly fee. There's many APIs, you need to pay a monthly usage fee. And uh, so, I mean, we try as much as possible to our customers that they don't have any hidden cost. For example, uh, I think at Amazon, you need to pay for the, uh, for the I.O. So we, we don't charge you for I.O. If you make a lot of I.O. and then we don't really care. We only share, we only say, okay, if you use more than two terabyte of band price per month, we'll charge you for, for band price. If you have I.O. operations, we don't charge anything for that. So that, that's a big difference. But uh, so for the API, you can do all the things which you can do on the website. You can also do it via via the API. So it's, it's usually quite interesting for our resellers because our resellers, every, every of our service can be resold. So many people, they use the API to resell it. Our, one of our biggest resellers, for example, is Amazon. If you buy a domain from Amazon, AWS, you will actually buy it from us. Uh, so uh, another thing we launched recently is the Gandhi CLI, or Comment Line Interface. It's available on GitHub, so if you have any merge request or, or you want to, to push some code to it as well, you can, you can contribute. And you can use this CLI if you don't want to do any programming or if you just want to say exec and then do something. We, we don't have any, any iOS API, but I would be very interested if someone of you wants to develop that. <laughs> yeah, we, we, actually, we actually had some customers who want to who want to build a mobile app for our services. Uh, that could be quite interesting as well. But they have, I've never written any spec for that, so I'm not sure. Yeah, so this is another API use case you can do. Uh, you can see, okay, if a, if a domain is available, you can list VMs. You can you can config you can config a VM. So this is this is for the hosting part. Uh, and, uh, you. So uh, okay. this is Singapore, by the way. ships in the harbor than, uh, than cars in the city. So, uh, yeah, so this is, I don't know if you can see where, so basically this is in C. I was told that C is the best example for iOS developers. So uh, basically the API is uh, XML RPC, so it's basically just HTTP plus token. And uh, you can connect to the API server with your API key and then do any kind of operation you want. For example, if you have a domain name and you just want to update uh, uh, the DNS records, you want to use a different IP address, you can just call the API and it will update it. So the nice thing about it is you don't need to run any, uh, I mean, you can use it with other services as well, but you don't need to run any kind of uh, DNS system yourself or manage the VMs. So the, all the kind of different services, we have like platform as a service and uh, infrastructure as a service. Depending on the level of knowledge you want to put and the amount of maintenance you want to do, uh, you, you can choose which one you want to use. I think the, for the simple hosting platform as a service, like 120 dollars per month. 
for, for 10 gigabyte of storage. And this is, I think, is quite okay price. Uh, then, uh, yeah, our website is in Chinese very soon. So uh, this, this is not like a preview, but it's, uh, it's, it's what's, what's actually translated. And right now we're just waiting for our payment process for the day finished implementation, and then we will go online with the Chinese website. So uh, this is this is the search for domain name in English. This is where where you can choose how to create a EPS. So basically here you can say okay uh, how many which data center you want to use. There will be Tokyo soon. How many CPUs should be there? How much RAM? Uh, how many VLANs and IPs? And how much storage space you want to use? Of course, you can create you can create multiple disks. So you so if, if you do this, you will see okay the the price will increase. So this is an estimation. This is not anti dollar. I think it's a This is the interface for creating a simple hosting instance. This is US dollar. You can say you want to do Node.js with uh, TGSQL or MongoDB or, or Ruby. This is our uh, the page where you can buy uh, the server again. And this is some introduction to the CLI. It's uh, on cli.gandhi.net if you want to check it out. And this is our rice cooker. <laughs> cool. The the complete documentation for the API is on uh, doc.rpc.gandhi.net, and you can you can check out everything you can do. You can also buy SSL certificates and manage the SSL certificates with the API as well. No. Any question? We have, we have if, if you if you want to check for the availability of domain, yeah, it's free. But I think we have like a limited amount of calls per per minute. Yeah. But we don't charge extra if you want to have more calls. If you have more calls, then you just tell us, and we will we will remove the limit for you. So that, that's how it works. And uh, most most of our resellers, of course, they use an API for for for, uh, for doing it. Amazon has their own dedicated API server, but the, our customers they they use this as well. Any other question? Oh, yeah, maybe, uh, if, okay, if, if you want to try the service, I can maybe give you some free hosting credits. You can cool. you can send me an email. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> uh, that, that would be interesting. But, uh, but then you must say what you want to use it for. <laughs> because that, that's what we're the most curious about. I mean, like maybe 90% of all of our customers are actually engineers, technical people. So we don't we don't really look for people who want to install the WordPress and just have the blog. So go go. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, but you can you can still install it. Okay? You, could manage, you could even manage it with Git. Okay, so uh, even if WordPress nowadays just updated itself, even if you don't ask it. You know, so, so uh, yeah. but I mean CM, CMS is nice as well. But uh, it's, I think it's very easy to start any kind of web service with this with this thing. And, uh, and and I hope that very soon we have the hosting in Tokyo as well. Then it will be also okay for having for customers in Taiwan. I was actually looking for a data center in Taipei and Taiwan as well, but it was very tough to find someone who gives us a very good uh, service level agreement, which says like okay, the availability is like 95%, and there's also no data center in Taiwan which is uh, carrier independent. Like all the major data centers, they're owned by one telecom company, so then you don't really control it. They say like okay, now we're going to cut the network. It's like okay, uh, because like this, you know, so the, it's, it's better to have a carrier neutral data center, and that's what we get in in Japan. Uh,更最重要是，如果你有问题，我们知道他住在哪里。Okay, thanks.